Wow. What a great. Give yourselves a round of applause. Man, oh, man, are you a great sight. To Congressman Murphy, to GOP Chairman Mike Wadley, to all of you that have been with us every step of the way, I ran here every bit as fast as I could. Because it is great to be back in the Tar Heel State. But I know we're all here for one reason and one reason only. And that is that North Carolina and America need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. That's what I'm talking about. It's on North Carolina, and the road to victory goes right through the Tar Heel State. I came here today because we need the people of this freedom-loving state to do just like you did in 2016. On November 3rd, we need North Carolina to show America that this is Trump country. But thank you all for coming out today. It's a beautiful day. Thank you for coming. The President's up in Pennsylvania today. But it's an honor for me to be here with you. It's also a special honor to share the stage with a friend of mine, an accomplished doctor, a man who traveled, ministered to people, healed the sick all over the world. In the State House here in North Carolina, he was a leader in the fight against opioid abuse. Since 2019, I can tell you, he's been one of the most principled, conservative, and fiercest allies of our president and our agenda. Would you join me in thanking Congressman and Dr. Greg Murphy? Thanks, Doc. You know, four years ago, you believed we could be strong again. You believed we could be prosperous again. You said yes to President Donald Trump in 2016. And from the looks of it, I think North Carolina is going to say yes to four more years of President Donald Trump in 2020. Wow. And it's because of what we've done, because of the support of the people of North Carolina, the incredible progress that we've made. I mean, think about it. Four years ago, we inherited a military that was hollowed out by years of reckless budget cuts, an economy that was struggling to break out of the slowest recovery since the Great Depression. Terrorism was on the rise around the world, and we witnessed a steady assault on our most cherished values. But in three short years, we rebuilt our military. We revived our economy. We secured our border, supported law enforcement, and stood for life, liberty, and the Constitution of the United States. And on the economy, I mean, after Joe Biden spent eight years as vice president trying to tax and spend and bail our way back to a growing economy, President Donald Trump created the greatest economy in American history, and we're doing it again. I mean, did you all see those new GDP numbers that just came out? Wow. The American economy grew by more than 33% during the third quarter, shattering any previous record by far. The great American comeback is on. And with four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House, we're going to bring the American economy back bigger and better than ever before. You know, as the President said yesterday, that third quarter was the biggest in history. It's not even close. And frankly, the President and I know that this American comeback is first a testament to the character the resilience and the strength of the American people. But it's also a tribute to our president and our allies in the Congress 
who work together to create the greatest economy the world's ever known. That's why it's, it's astonishing to think in the midst of a global pandemic, Joe Biden actually wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion. He wants to pass a $2 trillion version of the Green New Deal. He wants to go back to the individual mandate and taxes and socialist concepts at the center of Obamacare. Under President Donald Trump, we cut taxes across the board for working families and businesses. We rolled back more federal red tape than any administration in history. We fought for free and fair trade, unleashed American energy, and in three short years, businesses created 7 million good-paying jobs, including 250,000 jobs right here in the Tar Heel State. I mean, in those first three years, North Carolina saw its lowest unemployment rate since the Great Recession and the highest home ownership ever. And, you know, I really feel at home when I'm in North Carolina. It reminds me a lot of Indiana. You know, we do two things well. Places like ours do two things well. We make things and we grow things, right? But you all deserve to know, when Joe Biden was vice president, America lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. And the last president, who's back on the campaign trail, did you see him out there? Well, the last president, the last president actually said those manufacturing jobs they lost were never coming back, remember? He actually said, what magic wand do you have? Well, we didn't need a magic wand. We just needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs created in just three years. <laughs> manufacturing is back under President Donald Trump. And what we're making, we're selling to the world with all better deals. You know, I know trade is so important here in North Carolina. What we make, what we grow in this state, and sell to the world. And you all deserve to know that when we took office, half of our international trade deficit was with communist China. And Joe Biden's been a cheerleader for China all along the way. It's true. He said the rise of China was a positive development. He did. And he scoffed at the idea that China was even competition, even though we were seeing jobs leave our country and open up in China. Under President Donald Trump, we put China on notice. We imposed tariffs on China's goods and told them the era of economic surrender is over. And we're going to keep standing strong until they open their markets to what we make and what we grow. I promise you. And closer to home, you all remember NAFTA, right? I mean, literally, in the 25 years from NAFTA, being signed into law, out where I come from, we literally saw thousands of factories close and jobs shipped south of the border. I mean, it was after the election in 2016, I go back to Indiana where I was finishing my term as governor, and I was told that a company that had been in Indiana for 75 years was shuttering their doors and going to Mexico, and they told me there wasn't a thing they could do about it. And Joe Biden and the Democrats, you remember all those years they loved to complain about NAFTA? Right? But Joe Biden never lifted a finger to fix what was wrong with that trade agreement. But when the man who wrote The Art of the Deal got in the Oval Office, we got a way better deal with Canada and Mexico. The USMCA is gone, and NAFTA is here to stay. It's a win for North Carolina and a win for America. It's true. I mean, experts actually estimate that we're going to sell more than $2 billion more in agricultural exports to Canada and Mexico alone. It is a huge win for North Carolina. But it's not just about what Joe Biden has said and done. You all deserve to know about his running mate as well. I had a little debate with Kamala Harris a couple of weeks back in uh, Salt Lake City. Thank you. It was quite a night. 
But you deserve to know, I tried to bring this up in the debate. And Kamala Harris was, uh, she was ranked as the most liberal member of the United States Senate in 2019. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I served in Congress with Bernie Sanders. You know, it's hard to get to the left of Bernie Sanders. But Kamala Harris found a way. And Kamala Harris on this one, she was one of only 10 senators that voted against the USMCA. Even though it was a huge win for North Carolina and for American workers, Kamala Harris voted against the USMCA because she said it didn't go far enough on climate change. Kamala Harris put her radical environmental agenda ahead of North Carolina workers and North Carolina agriculture. But under President Donald Trump, we will always put American jobs and American agriculture first. <laughs> Count on it. And on energy, the choice is just as dramatic. You know, for the last year, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been running around talking about banning fracking, right, and abolishing fossil fuels. And then about the time uh, they start campaigning in Pennsylvania, their tune is changing <laughs> a little bit. But, you know, and, but Joe Biden went back to it. Did you see that presidential debate? How well did President Trump do in that presidential debate? Come on. Wasn't that great? What a great night. But in the presidential debate, if you stayed up through the whole thing, you get to the very end of it, and... And Joe Biden actually <laughs> says, we're going to transition from the oil industry. President Trump put it well. He just said, that's a big statement. I mean, come on. I mean, gonna, but then again, they've been saying they're going to abolish fossil fuels all along the way. I mean, it's just incredible. Now, Joe Biden said, <laughs> remember when he said, show the tape. Well, we've been showing the tape. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's clear. This reminds me of Groucho Marx said years ago, who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? Right? I mean, just they've been saying it. They're going to, under their, their Green New Deal, they're going to try and abolish fossil fuels. They're going to try and ban fracking. But under four more years of President Donald Trump, we are going to champion American energy. We're a net exporter of energy for the first time in 70 years. And we're going to have four more years of American energy independence. Such a contrast. Men and women of North Carolina, we have a choice to make on the economy alone. I think it's a choice between a Trump boom and a Biden depression. I mean, there was a recent nonpartisan study that said under Joe Biden's economic plans, America would lose 5 million jobs. And income of the typical American family would drop by $6,000 a year. So in the next three days, I got a favor to ask. You run into anybody in town who hadn't made a decision yet, or anybody you know anywhere across this state or nation. And you tell them, I was out at the airport, ran into Mike Pence. And he said, if I only had one, if only had one thing to say to you, he wanted me to ask you this question. I'm serious. You look at them, if they go, well, I don't know, it's this, it's that, just look at them and just say, Mike wanted me to ask you. Who do you really think can bring this economy all the way back. I mean, who do you really think can drive an agenda that will bring America back bigger and better than ever before? A career politician with 47 years raising taxes, stifling our economy under an avalanche of regulation, who wants to abolish fossil fuels and wave a white flag on trade, or a proven job creator who's overseeing the fastest economic recovery in American history. 
for our prosperity, for our jobs, for our future. We need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. I mean, you tell them that. You tell them that. See if they don't go, well, I see your point. Really? For real? So we're talking about our prosperity, but I, I don't need to tell the patriotic people of North Carolina. You know security is the foundation of our prosperity. And here in North Carolina, home of Fort Bragg and Camp Lejeune. I know you know that. And you know, it's especially great to be here in the home of Air Station Elizabeth City. Wow. It's really one of the great U.S. Coast Guard air stations in the world. I love what President Trump said about our Coast Guard. He said, when the red racing stripes of the Coast Guard vessel break the horizon, those in distress know that help is on the way, and our enemies know their time has come. You know, for 60 years, I heard on the way here, this base has grown to be one of the most critical Coast Guard bases in our country. Conducts a wide range of logistical support and rescue missions that keep our people safe. So before I go one step further, can we just, can we just hear it for Air Station, Elizabeth City, and all the great Coasties that serve there? Love our Coast Guard. But you all deserve to know, after years of reckless budget cuts in our national defense when Joe Biden was vice president, they're planning to do it again. I mean, there was an article two days ago how Democrats in Washington, D.C. are already planning massive defense cuts to pay for their big government programs if they take over the Congress and the White House. But under President Donald Trump, after those years of cuts that affected our readiness, support for our military, I'm proud to report to you as your vice president, but also as the proud father of a United States Marine and the father-in-law of a Navy pilot currently deployed. Under President Donald Trump, we've signed the largest increase in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. We're finally given our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard the resources and the support and the pay that they deserve when they defend our nation. And with that renewed American strength, we've stood with our allies and stood up to our enemies. With regard to our most cherished ally, after four previous presidents promised to do it, it was President Trump who kept his word when he moved the American embassy to Jerusalem, the capital of the state of Israel. And for the first time in 25 years, three Arab nations have recognized Israel's right to exist and establish diplomatic relations. We've stood with our allies. And with that renewed strength, we've stood up to our enemies. Last year, American forces captured the last inch of territory controlled by the ISIS caliphate and took their leader out with one American casualty. We got out of the Iran nuclear deal. We stood strong against Iran aggression. And an Iranian general responsible for the death of hundreds of our service members, Qasem Soleimani, is gone. And you might have heard, last night, in a daring raid, U.S. Special Forces rescued an American hostage in Nigeria. That American is safe and no military personnel were injured. The armed forces of the United States are the greatest force for good in the history of the world. And we're going to continue to make the strongest military in the world stronger still for four more years. 
So it's been about supporting our military and their families. But it's also been about standing with all of you who served in our armed forces. When Joe Biden was vice president, America saw years of scandal at the VA that shocked the conscience of the nation. You remember? It's incredible. We literally had veterans that were dying, literally dying on waiting lists, waiting to get care at VA facilities, care that they earn in the uniform of the United States. But under President Donald Trump, those days are over. He signed the most sweeping reform of the VA in 50 years. We fired 3,000 VA employees that weren't giving our veterans the care that they earned, and Veterans Choice is now available for every veteran in America. You know, I know in this patriotic state, there's an awful lot of you here that served in uniform, so would you mind just putting your hand in the air, men and women, if you served in our armed forces, Give us a chance to say thank you one more time. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for our freedom. Closer to home, I couldn't be more proud to serve alongside a president who has stood for law and order and stood with the men and women of law enforcement every day. You know, when I was growing up in a small town in Indiana, we used to drive up to Chicago over the holidays to visit my grandparents. Me and my three brothers, when we were little, used to stand in that living room when my uncle had come out to go to work, dressed in that blue uniform, the badge and the sidearm. He was a member of the Chicago Police Department. And we would just look up in awe. You know, all my heroes wear uniforms. President, I know what you know. The men and women who serve in law enforcement in this country are some of the best people in America, and they deserve the respect of every American every day. Now, Joe Biden, he thinks that America is systemically racist. Says it all the time. And he also says that he thinks that police officers have a, quote, implicit bias against minorities. When asked if he'd support cutting funding to law enforcement, Joe Biden said, quote, yes, absolutely. And his running mate Kamala Harris recently praised the mayor of Los Angeles for cutting $150 million out of the budget of the LAPD. But I'll make you a promise. Four more years of President Donald Trump, we're not going to defund the police. Not now, not ever. We're going to back the blue, and we're going to back the blue for four more years. Would you all mind showing all these law enforcement officers, state and local, that are with us today how much you appreciate the job they do and the sacrifices they and their families make? Thank you, guys. You know, we know we don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and supporting our African-American neighbors or other minorities or families that live in our cities. I mean, under President Trump, we, we've done both for the last four years, and we're going to keep doing both for four more years. I mean, we supported law enforcement, 4,000 new police officers through the COPS program. And when violence broke out this summer in major cities around America, we launched Operation Legend, named after a four-year-old boy that was killed in his bed in the middle of the night. And we've arrested 2,500 violent offenders in cities around America. At the same time, at the same time, we saw the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans, highest funding for historically black colleges and universities ever. We saw the creation of 8,000 Opportunity Zones, bringing jobs and opportunity. And we fought to give educational choice to every family in every city in America.
With four more years of President Donald Trump, we're going to have law and order and prosperity and education opportunities in every city for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us God. So it's been about law and order. The foundation of law and order is the rule of law. And under President Donald Trump, I'm proud to report, with your support, we've actually appointed more than 220 conservatives to our federal courts. And they're all men and women who will uphold the God-given liberties enshrined in our Constitution, like the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, and the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. Two hundred and twenty federal judges, and that includes Justice Neil Gorsuch, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, and Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Isn't she great? <laughs> How much did you love when she was asked, What you got written on that piece of paper? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, she just is she's an inspiring person. And she's going she's gonna to make America proud as our newest Associate Justice on the Supreme Court of the United States. But none of that would have been possible, all those conservatives on our courts, without a president who kept his word to the people of North Carolina, appointed men and women who will not legislate from the bench, who interpret laws as written. But none of it also would have been possible without the support of both of your Republican senators from North Carolina. So right after you get done re-electing President Donald Trump, we need you to send Senator Tom Tillis back to the United States Senate in a renewed Republican majority. It's got to happen. I mean, this ultimately is about protecting our liberties. I mean, we have people that put on the uniform that have defended our freedom. But the judiciary in our constitutional republic is the place that's a vanguard for those liberties enshrined in our Bill of Rights and in the hearts of every American. And the truth is, when Joe Biden was vice president, those liberties and our most cherished values were under assault. And that included the freedom of religion. I mean, when Joe Biden was vice president, the last administration used the power of the bureaucratic state to erode the conscience rights of doctors and nurses and religious charities. They actually hauled a group of Catholic nuns who had taken a vow of poverty into court to order them to compromise their faith to live under the standards of Obamacare. It's incredible. And that, re that religious intolerance spanned across the Democratic Party in that time. It was just a couple of years ago, the leading Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee said that she was concerned about Amy Coney Barrett's sincere Catholic faith. Remember that? She said, and I quote, the dogma lives loudly within you, like that was a problem. And then Hollywood elites started attacking Amy Coney Barrett, and they never stopped attacking her for her faith and her values. Well, I got a message for the Democrats in Washington and their friends in Hollywood. That dogma lives loudly in me. That dogma lives loudly in you. And the right to live and worship according to the dictates of our faith lives loudly in the Constitution of the United States of America. Under President Donald Trump, we've stood strong for the religious freedom of every American. We repealed the Johnson Commandment Amendment that freed up every pulpit and every place of worship in America. We restored the conscience rights of doctors and nurses. And it was President Donald Trump who ended the assault on the Little Sisters of the Poor, and the Supreme Court made it permanent. We are going to stand for the religious freedom of every American of every faith for four more years.
And finally, when you're talking about our values, I couldn't be more proud to serve as vice president to a president who stands without apology for the sanctity of human life. You know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris support taxpayer funding of abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. President Donald Trump's the most pro-life president in American history. So in our first three years, if you're taking notes, we revived our economy, we rebuilt our military, we stood for law and order, liberties and life. And none of that would have been possible without the strong and consistent support of North Carolina's Republicans in Congress. It's true. So right after you reelect President Donald Trump, you send Senator Tom Tillis back to the Senate. We need you to send Congressman Greg Murphy to a new Republican majority on Capitol Hill and retire Nancy Pelosi once and for all. Out. She's got to go. <laughs> you know, I was actually in the Congress the last time we retired her back in 2010. And I plan to be here when we retire Nancy Pelosi again. <laughs> Let's get it done. You know, when you look at what we were able to accomplish with a Republican House and a Republican Senate, just in those first two years, there's only one way you can describe it. We made America great again. Am I right? True. And then the coronavirus struck from China. But before the first documented case of community spread anywhere in America, I saw President Trump do what no American president had ever done. He suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. President Trump put the health of America first. Now, Joe Biden at the time said that was xenophobic. That's a fancy word for racism. He did. Essentially said it was racist. He actually wrote a couple days before the president's decision that, that banning travel from anywhere in a global pandemic would, quote, make things worse. But Joe Biden got it wrong. President Trump got it right. And I can tell you, having head, headed the White House Coronavirus Task Force the last eight months, President Trump's decision to shut down travel to China saved untold American lives because it bought us time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. It's true. We reinvented testing. We worked with American businesses, see to the manufacture and the distribution of billions of medical supplies to our incredible doctors and nurses and health care providers. We saw the development of therapeutics that are literally saving lives as we speak. And we're just a short time away from having tens of millions of doses of the first safe coronavirus vaccine in the world for the American people. And we're, we're still going through this, men and women. We know it. The winter's coming on. We're starting to see cases rise. And I just promise the people in North Carolina, we're going to keep moving heaven and earth to make sure our doctors and nurses and hospitals have all the resources and medicines they need to give a member of your family any level of care we'd want a member of our family to have. We'll keep all those supplies coming. We'll keep protecting the vulnerable. We'll keep saving lives until the day comes when we have that vaccine and we put this coronavirus in the past. And as we do all that, we are opening up America again. You know, it's amazing to think, it's a testament to the American people's strength and faith and resilience. After losing 22 million jobs at the height of this pandemic, because of the foundation that we poured in those first three years, because of the unprecedented support that the president secured from 
Congressman Murphy and others, relief for families, relief for businesses. We've already seen 11 and a half million Americans go back to work in the last five months, including 320,000 people right here in the Tar Heel State. We're opening up America again. And North Carolina's coming back. But to open America all the way up, we need four more years of President Donald Trump. And to open up North Carolina, we need Dan Forrest to be elected as the next governor of the great state of North Carolina. Get it done. What a great man. Now, you all deserve to know, as we've been making this progress, working every day to care for those impacted, and opening up our country. Joe Biden's actually talking about shutting down our economy again. Yes. I mean, a couple of days ago, you saw the news in Europe. Several European countries are already announcing lockdowns. So you can bet Joe Biden will shut this economy down if he makes it to the White House. I mean, your schools will be closed again. Your churches will be closed again. Your small businesses all across Main Street will be shuttered again just like at the worst moments of this pandemic. It's amazing to think right at, right at the moment the American economy is coming back, American people are getting back on their feet. Joe Biden said he would shut it down, his words. He'd shut it down. Joe Biden says we're in for a long, dark winter. President Trump said we're going to distribute the vaccine, we're going to defeat the virus in the best days for America are yet to come. You know, the truth is the choice in this election has never been clear. But the stakes have never been higher. You know, when you look at their agenda of higher taxes, open borders, socialized medicine, abortion on demand, Green New Deal, defunding the police. It's obvious. Joe Biden would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for the radical left. Now, Joe Biden has said that uh, democracy is on the ballot. Well, I think our economic recovery is on the ballot. I think law and order are on the ballot. But I also think there's things much more foundational to who we are as a people. You know, in this election, I think it's not going to be whether America ends up more Republican or more Democrat, more liberal or more conservative, more red or more blue. I think the choice in this election is whether America remains America. Whether we're going to chart a course for our children and our children's children, build on our great American heritage of faith and family and freedom and patriotism, or whether we're going to let Joe Biden and the Democratic Party surrender to the radical left, shut down our economy, topple our heritage of freedom, traditional values, and set our nation on an inexorable path of socialism and American decline. So let me say to each and every one of you, with three days to go, for all the ideals and the values that have always made America unique, exceptional, and great among the nations, for the freedom that generations of Americans have fought to defend, We've got to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden will never be President of the United States. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. It's that serious, folks. It's that real. But I got to tell you, as I as I close, I got a couple things I want to ask you to do. 
let me first say, all of us need to do all we can. You know, I didn't know the president very well when he called me to join this ticket four years ago. I mean, I'd seen him on TV. But when he called me, I said yes in a heartbeat because I, I sensed in the time we spent together that he had the vision grounded in our highest ideals as Americans. And he had the personal leadership qualities to make this country great again. Now, I love you too. Now, I, I will tell you, some, some, people think, uh, some people think the President and I are a little bit different. But I want to be honest with you and tell you, we've become very close friends. And it's the greatest honor of my life to be Vice President to President Donald Trump. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I've been there when the bright lights are off and the cameras are off. I've served at his side every day these last four years. And I can tell you firsthand, firsthand, against overwhelming resistance, opposition and obstruction like I'd never seen before from the Democratic Party, and against unrelenting and unfair attacks from their allies in the national media. Men and women in North Carolina, I'm going to tell you, there has never been a day gone by that I haven't seen this president get up, turn his face like flint against the wind, and fight to keep the promises that he made to the people of this country. Now it's our turn to fight for him. It's on, North Carolina. You need to bring it. Three more days to four more years. So as soon as we get done here, I need to do a couple of things. And still have time to do the first. First thing, I need you to vote, North Carolina. Vote to reelect President Donald Trump to the White House. I heard early voting actually ends today, but if we finish up in a couple of minutes, which we will, you can head down to Pasquotank Elementary School, 1407 Pear Tree Road. He already did it. You go do it. Cast your vote, and remember, friends don't let friends vote alone. Bring a family member. Bring a neighbor today or Election Day and vote to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. So after you vote with a friend, today before three or Monday, Tuesday, sir. <clears throat> Secondly, I want you to tell somebody. Tell them why you feel so strongly about this president. Tell them everything we accomplished in those first three years to make this country strong and prosperous. Tell them, tell them about the choice that we face in this election. More dramatic than any choice in my life. You know, the president and I were on 60 Minutes last Sunday night. Yeah, not not friendly. But, you know, the president got asked a question. He gave an answer I'll never forget. It's like one of my favorite ones he's ever given. This reporter said to him, he said, he said, how would you describe your supporters? And the president said, without missing a beat, he said, they are people who love our country. So go tell your neighbors and friends you love our country. We have a president who loves our country, and we need four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. And finally, if you're of a mind, 
I'd ask you to do one more thing in the next three days. And I've traveled around this country the last four years, and I'm absolutely convinced, more than any time in my life, that America is a freedom-loving nation. And America is a nation of faith. So if you're inclined to bow the head and bend the knee from time to time at your house like we do at mine, I'd encourage you to do that too. I mean, pray for, pray for the families that have suffered loss this year. Pray for the doctors and nurses and researchers that are given care and developing the medicine for those struggling to this day. Pray for our military at home and abroad and all of those who protect and serve. And pray for every freedom-loving American that we would do in our time that which is necessary to preserve our heritage of freedom for ourselves and our posterity. And when you pray, pray with confidence. And claim those ancient words that Americans have clung to in much more challenging times. That if his people, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and turn, that he'll do like he's always done in the long and storied history of this nation. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land. This one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America. Pray for all of the American people. It'll make a difference. I promise it. I know it in my heart. So thank you all for coming out today. I leave here with renewed confidence. You still got 17 minutes to go and vote. And I'm confident if all of us do all we need to do to vote, to speak out, and to pray. We're going to have a great victory all across North Carolina and all across America. We're going to make North Carolina and America more prosperous than ever before. We're going to make North Carolina and America safer than ever before. We're going to make North Carolina and America more united than ever before. And with Senator Tom Tillis back in the Senate, with Congressman Greg Murphy back in the House, with Dan Forrest in the governor's office. With President Trump back in the White House. And with God's help. We are going to make America great again, again. Thank you all very much. God bless you. God bless America. Now let's go get it done, North Carolina.